then I went to my second police academy um, after being commissioned for four years and ran into a little trouble with the Federal Law Enforcement ca um, Academy in Glencoe, Georgia, uh, because I kept objecting to some things that they were teaching. And um, after four months down there, um, I came back very um, upset with the way that we were required to do things and that uh, somebody who wanted to question the system to the point to make it better and to make it more just uh, was punished and written up a, a lot. So uh, never been written up in 15 years of federal service. I got about 10 write-ups down there. Um, All right. Interesting that you said that you objected to something in... Okay. So what did you object to? So there were there were a number of things, and it, it was um, so I'll I'll give you a few examples. Um, so Glencoe, Georgia is um, it's Glencoe County, Georgia is, is actually where Ahmad Arbery was shot. Uh, so some of the um, county sheriffs actually teach at the Federal Law Enforcement Training Center um, down there. So it's a um, there's a decent sized black population, but it's not a majority. Um, by any means, there are role players and scenarios. So this is one of the first times I, I really got people upset with me. Uh, there are a number of scenarios that you work out as, as law enforcement trainees. And uh, park rangers come with a unique perspective because we've actually already been on the job. We, we require two commissions. We have a seasonal commission and a permanent commission. Um, so we've all worked a while. Um, so that that's kind of a little bit of background on that. I had been doing this for four years um, and other federal agents come down there for the first time. It's the first time they learn how to do their jobs. But these scenarios kept playing out so that the black role players, which were not a majority, anytime there was violence um, against an officer and an officer had to pull their gun, it was a black male. It was a young black male that I, you know, so I asked. Um, after like the fifth scenario this had happened in. And uh, I said, you know, you don't think it might be subconsciously teaching officers to in expect and anticipate violence when a black male is involved, when every single one of these situations that we are confronted with a black male is a, uh, a use of force situation. Mm. And uh, any anywhere that we are de-escalating or where that that we're encouraged to um, talk through a problem or deal with a small larceny or that kind of thing, it's that's when our white role players are utilized. So um, I got reprimanded um, severely and actually got written up. Um, had a chance to defend myself, um, mm -hmm. and I was told uh, by the commandant. Uh, of uh, my school that um, he understood where I was coming from, but uh, it wasn't how I made friends. And I, I needed to just play along. I, 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 okay, okay. And you know what's crazy is I've heard this countless times before with other law enforcement agents. And uh, uh, this is no shock to me, but it still shocks me. Oh. Yeah, it, it's it's and, and it's it's very frustrating. And, and for the Park Service, the Park Service is a very um, I, I mean, it's a progressive agency. You know, we and my 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 law enforcement agency at my park was really they were open to me working through education, me working through crisis intervention, me teaching de-escalation. Um, but I really found at you know the federal academy that the, that the structural change just wasn't possible and and that consistently happened there were a number of issues having to do uh with race and a few having to do with sex you know where it was kind of like that's really inappropriate you know there there are women who do this job there's one sitting in front of you um and i would be i would be written up for um attitude or for um, failure to comply with an instructor's command or something to that impact. Uh, there was a there was a scenario I failed because I didn't search a gentleman um, because I had received a call um, in the scenario that said there was a suspicious black male 
there was no description of what he was doing, of what he looked like beyond the fact that he was black and male. And um, I went to the parking lot where he had been reported and there was black male there, but he wasn't doing anything suspicious in my purview. So I went over and I, I chatted with him real quick and, you know, not, not apprehensive. So I walked away. Um, and um, I was reprimanded and, and told I failed the scenario because he had a gun on him and I absolutely should have searched him. When I questioned the fact that I did not have the constitutional authority to do so, I was told I should have tricked him into giving me permission to do so. Um, and that's not how I believe business should be done. So, uh, yeah, so that those those kind of things that I ran into over and over again, um, it just it, it really. I, I believe in justice and I believe in resource protection, uh, like so deeply, um, and I believe in violence prevention, and uh, I believe that there is a a very positive way to bring justice into our communities. Um, and I'm proud of the fact that I educated myself on, um, you know, not just law enforcement, but the you know, legal history and the sociology and victimology and, and how poverty impacts communities. And because that's where I came from. And that was important to me to understand that, you know. And so uh, to not be able to bring that into my career field at any impactful level um, just made it really hard for me to do my job.